Dr. Rogelio Barala Jr., a urologist practicing here in Manila, Philippines. Thank you for inviting me to speak about the Philippines' experience on the legislation of the vape law, as well as the effects of cigarette smoke in the genitourinary system. The global prevalence of current tobacco use has declined by over 30% from the year 2000 to 2020. And this was observed from the World Health Statistics in 2023, published by the WHO. And in the year 2000, worldwide prevalence of both genders is at 32% and declined to 22.3% 22, 22 in 2020. Although there is evident decrease among all regions, it is observed that the Western Pacific region to which the Philippines belongs has the slowest progress in terms of decline of cigarette smoking cessation. And uh, the Global Action Plan for Prevention and Control of NCDs has set a target to reduce the current tobacco use prevalence by 30% between 2010 and 2025. Although the rate of reduction in the prevalence slowed in the period from 2010 to 2020 as compared to 2000 to 2010, there will be continuous downtrend in the Western Pacific region being the low, slowest. The Global Adult Tobacco Survey in 2021 observed that there are 14 million Filipino cigarette smokers and 117,000 die annually. And with these numbers, it was observed that there is only around 4% quit rate. Various nations around the world share its own experience on their fight against the deterrent effects of cigarette smoking in their society. And the Philippines struggled to put into law stems back in 2013 when one of our senators filed a bill to regulate electronic cigarette. And for the next three to five years, more bills were filed to regulate the use of the vaporized nicotine products. So in July 25, 2022, the Vaporized Nicotine and Non-Nicotine Product Regulation Act was born and called as RA 11900. And under RA 11900, it promotes tobacco harm reduction as a state policy. It sets a differentiated regulatory framework from smoke-free alternatives and curbs illicit trade and ensures tax collection and of course protects minors and non-smokers and consumers. And uh, for it to differentiate and define um, tobacco harm reduction among other products, the government shall regulate the importation, assembly, manufacture, and sales of the packaging, distribution, use, and advertisement promotion in order to promote a healthy environment and protect its citizens from vaporized nicotine and nicotine products. And uh, since it is a differentiated framework, it provides a separate regulatory framework governing vapor products and HTPs and defines vaporized nicotine and non-nicotine products as a novel consumer goods that generate aerosol and not combustion. It also requires differentiated health warnings for the packaging of vapor products and HTP consumables and requires designated vaping areas in all indoor public places with strict standards for use where minors and smoking combustible cigarettes are not allowed. And uh, in order to protect minors, the ban the, the bans the sale and use of minors of vape products and bans the sale of ad and advertising and promotion of vape products within 100 meters of school perimeter and playground. It also requires POS signage, the sale or distribution of vaporized nicotine and non-nicotine products to or by persons below 18 years old is illegal. And of course, bans the display of products immediately next to the products of particular interest to minors. It also bans the use of flavor descriptions and product communication, communications that unduly appeal to minors in vape products and penalizes with fine imprisonments for persons who will sell to minors. Um, for the packaging and health warnings in the POS signages, it requires graphic health warnings and textual warnings with the penalty of fine, imprison fine imprisonment and requires product health warnings as I have mentioned earlier. And um, it also um, prohibits the importation and manufacture of vape products that do not comply with the local um, Bureau of Internal Revenue. 
and prohibits the sale of vape products on the internet if the retailer is not registered on the Department of Trade and Industry or Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, another um, included for the ban of illegal products would require the registration of manufacturers and importers of vape products with the Department of Trade and Industry and requires the internet website e-commerce platforms will only allow online sellers that are registered to the local DTI and BAR. With all these, we have seen support from medical experts, consumer industry groups, and the government agencies. And uh, for the past um, few months, since uh, it was the law was enacted, we have gained support from different um, agencies of the government. But it does not end there. Of course, the next steps would be building more advocates in the civil society and government, continue education on educating smokers and cessation options, and monitor and advocate for faithful implementation of the vape law in the local government. And of course, um, promote government-to-government -government dialogue on the global best practices on the vape regulation as we are doing right now. So the ideal framework for this um, vape law here in the Philippines includes a differentiated regulatory framework which recognizes the difference between combustible cigarettes smoking versus smoke-free products. It supports accessibility which provides smokers reasonable access to regulated and quality less harm, harm uh, alternatives to cigarette smoking. And of course, protects its consumers and industry as it protects the youth and the non-smokers to combat illicit trade and ensures collection of taxes. But the question there is, eh, as a urologist, why do I advocate for tobacco harm reduction? So whenever we talk about cigarette smoking and its deterrent effects on the human body, we'd almost always think of two disease entities. First would be the chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, which will include your emphysema and chronic bronchitis. And the next one would be, of course, your lung cancer. However, um, unknown to many, cigarette smoking can also cause a lot of diseases in the genitourinary system. And this will include, number one, for the kidneys, it can cause kidney stones. There are evidences that would say that kidney, uh, cigarette smoking is actually a risk factor for one to develop also as ki for kidney stones. And of course, um, kidney cancer is one of the dreaded um, diseases that can be seen no, for all almost all tobacco smokers and cigarette smoking has been a very high risk factor for one to develop kidney, kidney cancer as well as a urinary bladder cancer um, and of course cigarette smoke can also cause uh, interstitial cystitis irritable uh, urinary bladder as well as incontinence and as I've mentioned earlier it will also include, of course, your urinary bladder cancer. And cigarette smoke can also affect your prostate. In fact, it can. there are studies that would say that it can um, actually contribute also to the prostate cancer. And it, there are also evidences that would suggest that tobacco smoking is also associated with um, inflammation of the prostate, which will include your prostatitis. And of course, one of the more common um, effect of cigarette smoking would also would include your erectile dysfunction as well as infertility. So that is why we as urologists, we are um, very supportive of uh, cigarette smoking cessation. And with that, we would really want our patients who are smokers to stop smoking and uh, there are evidences that would suggest that once a patient starts 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 to stop smoking, there is also an observable smoke uh, cessation of diseases once you stop smoking. Which, in this particular slide, would suggest that uh, smoking cessation will actually decrease the risk for real cancer, and uh, it also will improve. Uh, once in, um, erection will actually improve after smoking cessation and of course improve the sperm production and that is why we are we have been supportive of the vape law here in the Philippines because um, it has been an option 
alternative um, to cigarette smoking has been an option for those who are not able to really quit smoking. But again, as a urologist, as a doctor, we, we would always advise our patients to stop smoking. And because we want, once we stop smoking, it's going to decrease the risk for one to develop all of these diseases. So we have to embrace a healthier tomorrow and choose life, choose wellness, and choose a smoke-free future. Good morning again and thank you.